us. We enthrone you. We proclaim you are king. Standing here in the midst of us. We raise you up with our praise. And as we worship you, your throne. And as we worship be your throne, and as we worship be your throne, I'm Lord Jesus, thank your place. Sing with me. Jesus, we have thrown you, we proclaim that you are king. We proclaim you a king, standing here in the midst of us. We raise you high with our praise, and as we worship you, your throne, and as we worship you, your throne. As we worship in your throne, come Lord Jesus, take your place, come and take your place, come Lord Jesus, take your place, Jesus, we enthrone you, we enthrone you. We proclaim that you are my king, standing here in the midst of us. We raise you up with our praise, and as we worship you, your throne, and as we worship you, your throne. And as we worship in your throne, come Lord Jesus, take your place, come and take your place, come Lord Jesus, come and take your place, oh, come and reveal your will to us, come Lord Jesus, take your place, Father, here we are. Your place is missing in our life. Your voice has been absent. Absence of you in our choices has caused us so many damage and havoc. Our destiny is flowing with curse. Because we have rejected our ways. Bring us back to your truth. Guide us back where we can solely rely upon you. And seek your face. In Jesus' name. Beloved, kindly turn your Bible with me into the book of Genesis, the chapter number one. Genesis chapter one. Today, I want to answer a question that people have been asking me these days, Brother Gabriel. Is it right for a Christian to practice birth control? Is it right? Is it sin for a child of God who has medicational issue or health issue or a person who have given birth because of economic reason the person can no longer afford to take care of children and because of that she said that i don't want a baby again has any human being got a right to choose if a baby should be born do we have a right to arrange how many children we need to give birth? Are we in control or is God in control? Birth control. Are human being in control or is God in control? When we understand that, it's, I think the answer is already given. Contraception is a sin. Abortion is a sin. Genesis chapter number one. God said, let us make man in an image, verse 26, and let him 
Take dominion over everything that we have made. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the flat fish of the sea. Let them have dominion. Let them have dominion. Let them have control. Let them rule over. Let them have control over. No human beings. Let man have control over fish. So man have ability to control how many fish they need to come on this earth. Let them have dominion over the sea. Man have the right to control the sea. Are we able to control the sea? Man have the right over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over everything that creeping, that hath creeping upon the earth. This is the assignment of man. Man is supposed to have control over the universe, basically. Literally, man was in charge. And when man became in charge, man had the right to control animals, to control waters, control trees. We shape them, we plant them, we cut them, we use them. Has man rights over human soul? Who have the rights? So God created man and his image. God created man. Has God stopped creating man? God is still creating man. Humanity to come to earth is God's creation. Has man right to stop God's creation? Has human being right? Do you think you have rights? Who gave you that right? Pastor, who gave you that right? Doctor, who gave you that right? God is still creating, but you said, no, you can't create again. Contraception is fighting against God. Abortion is fighting against God. Saying no to God, you can't do this. You can't do this in here. It's a wrestling. And nobody had ever wrestled with God and have succeeded. When we ask question, let us go into the beginning. How was it? Is that how God created it to be? Put all your excuses and your reason of doing that aside. If you trust in God, those reasons have no place. If we have our confidence and our trust in God, all our argument will cease. Because we don't trust God, because we don't believe in God, we have taken the law upon our hands and we want to do what we want to do. Now when we stand before our maker, we will have questions to answer. And God created the man and a woman, children and babies were all created in the same day. The day that God created Adam, he created human race. Every human being was in Adam because humanity were in the seed. The seed was in God, Jesus Christ. He injected in the soil and that's why he became a living soul. And that's so that the reproducing of its kind. Your pastor may have something different. If the pastor haven't got the spirit of God, if the pastor haven't got the mind of Christ, he would tell you all kinds of things that will bring you to eternal domination and under the wrath of God. The time has come for us to question the integrity of our pastors. Where do they talk from? And God blessed them. After God has created Adam and Eve, he blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful. Fruitful means bring fruits out of you. Reproduce. Give your kind. Produce your kind. God bless them. To bless somebody means to allow. To pronounce increase in that person's life. To pronounce increase. Meaning that God affirmed the assignment of man to increase and to multiply. So any man that refuses to do that is cursed. If you reject the blessings of God, you have accepted the curses of God. Whenever a man rejects the blessings of God, he has accepted the curse. So from the Genesis point of view, God did not give the control, birth control in the hands of man. God did not give abortion. How many children should be birthed into this earth is not in the hands of any human being. 
And therefore, any person that does it, does it against the will of God. Genesis chapter number 38. Let's go there. Had birth control started when? Birth control started when man refused to do what God wants him to do. I want you to understand, barrenness is a curse in the hands of God. Barrenness is a curse. To be barren means you don't have a child. You don't have a, a child. So in the house of God, any person who is not having a child is a curse then. It's a curse. So if you say that you don't want to give birth, then you are telling God that you want to be cursed. Psalm number 113 verse 9. He gave the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. God wants to give every woman to have a baby. So when you say that you don't want to have a baby, meaning that you want to render yourself as a barren, your reason is personal. Your reason is personal. It might be selfish interest or it's, it might be lack of trust in God. Lack of trust in God. I know many people have insulted me on this. That if you have given birth to five, six, seven children and you don't have anything to feed on, then you would think, you would think either you should have birth control or not. That is nice. That is why children are not given to children. Before you be in a position to give birth, you must be in a position to take care of them. Before you sleep with a woman, you must know that sleeping with a woman is bringing responsibility. So God doesn't give children to children. He gives children to adults, mature people who are well able to take care of. So if you are not in a position to take care of children, don't give birth. I want you to understand, sexual intercourse is not for fun. Is God will give that one to us. Number one reason is for productivity. It's exchange. It's exchange. Transfer. Transfer of spirit, transfer of life, and reproduction. That was the main reason that God gave that act in a man. Genesis chapter 25, and Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord granted, and the Lord granted his prayer, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. The first time in the Bible was Sarah. God delayed Sarah's childbirth. And you can imagine Isaac also has grown up, and the wife is not conceiving. Hmm. Your mother suffered before he got one child. She got one child. And the boy grew. And the wife that he married to, the lady was not giving birth. So that boy was crying. You don't know what it means that you don't have a baby. You don't know it. If you really know it, you'll be grateful unto God for God to give you one. You'll be grateful. And you won't do all kinds of demonic things that the worldly people are doing. But you won't come even before God and say, God, close my womb. It's enough. People are crying every night and day. You don't, they can't conceive. You can't conceive. At the old age, when you go to hospital in care homes and see women and men that are there, that they don't have children, therefore they don't have anybody to visit them, you will understand what it takes. Now, if, a, if somebody is a barren, how painful it is. Why do you want to render yourself barren? Why do you want to curse the children that you have given birth to? When we touch those things that are cursed, everything that fights against the mind of God is cursed. Bring curse. Deuteronomy chapter number two, 7 verse 14. You shall be blessed above all people. There shall not be a male or a female barren among you and among your livestock. Even among our animals, God doesn't want them to be barren. Contraception render us barren. Contraception render us barren. Abortion render us barren. And there is eternal punishment against those who do that. Genesis chapter 11 verse 20. Now Sarai, 
Sari was barren. She had no child. Sarah. Her name, Sarah, means a mother of generation. But before then, she was Sarin, a childless mother. A childless mother. I want you to understand, in the Bible, Luke chapter number 1, verse 7, Elizabeth was barren. And God canceled that. Hannah, in 1 Samuel, was barren. And God canceled that. Re uh, Rachel was barren. And God canceled that. Everywhere in the Bible... Where you see barrenness, it's either the anger of God or God prolonging his plans and his purpose for human life. So God wants to drive away anything which is non-productive. God hates anything which is non-productive. Joel chapter 2 verse 20. I will remove northerners far from you and drive him into a purge and desolate land. His vanguard into the eastern sea. And his rear guard into the western sea. The stench and the foul smell of him will rise for he has done great things. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lord has promised us of fruitfulness. In Psalm, Psalm number 128, your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. There is nothing painful. There is nothing painful above barrenness. There is nothing so frustrating that you and your husband are expecting every now and then and there is no baby coming. What does Bible says about children? The word of God tells us that children are blessings of God. Psalm 127, verse 3 to 5. Behold, children are heritage from the Lord. Children are heritage from the Lord. In other words, we inherit them from God. They are inheritance that we, take, we receive from God. And you say, you don't want that inheritance. Why? You don't have job. We have had enough. Do you know what enough is? You don't know what enough is. God is the one that has supposed to. If you are having enough, go to God and let God decide. Other than that, you bring curse upon yourself. From the Lord, the fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Meaning that your children are your future weapon. Your children are your future joy. Your children are your future glory. I am a Ghanaian, a Khan, because children are inheritance. There are so many proverbs or songs that people sing for people who cannot conceive. There is one song that says that I have labor in vain if I go to marriage and I couldn't conceive. I have labor in vain. Life become waste. If a woman marries, if a man marry a woman, and doesn't conceive. We consider it as curse. In my tradition, you can lose your husband. If a woman cannot conceive, you can lose your husband. So it is something that we are proud of. But our modern, our modern time, giving birth has become something that people don't want to. Because humanity are selfish. We don't have time for that. We don't have time for that. Psalm 127 says that children are inheritance from the Lord. They are the, the fruits of a woman is a reward. A fruits of a womb of a woman is a reward. So if a woman say, I don't want to conceive again, meaning that you don't want any reward. Your holiness preacher, Pastor Paul Rica, is affirming that. Alan, uh, as, uh, Deeper Life also affirmed that, that contraception is not sin. If you follow said teachings, you are going to hell. I want to ask you a question. If your mother applied contraception, will you be born? If your mother decided not to give birth to you, don't you think that your mother has been a wicked person? Don't you think your mother will be a wicked person? Please, 
Let us be very careful. Let's read John uh, Genesis chapter 38. Genesis chapter 38. There was a man, and that man refused to give birth. His brother died, and he was asked to marry his senior brother's wife and make children for his brother. He refused to make children. He refused to make children. And the story is very, very sad. And it came to pass at that time, Judah went down from his brethren and sent into a certain Adamite whose name was Hera. And Judah saw her daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua. And he took her and went in to her. And she conceived and bare a son, and he called his name Er. And she conceived again and bare a son, and she called his name Onam. And she yet again conceived and bare another son, and called his name Shelah. And he was at the Chabit when she bore him. Judah took a wife for Er, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar. And Er, Judah, firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. Judah said unto Onan, Go into thy brother's wife, or marry her, and raise up seed to your brother. That was the tradition of Israel. If a person die at the age, when you marry and at the early age you don't conceive, and you die, your brothers need to marry your wife. Now you will produce children under your name. So, Er died. Onan, the second son, was supposed to marry to Tamar. Oman knew that seed should not be his. And it came to pass, when he went into his brother's wife, that he spilled out his sperm on the ground. Least he should give seed to his brother. And the act was not pleasant unto God. The thing which he did was displeased. Why? Because he didn't want to give birth. Birth control. Birth control. He didn't want to give birth. He spilled his sperm out. He spilled it out. The only way that children can be produced on earth is when my sperm enter into my woman's womb. So long as the sperm doesn't enter, straight away there is no child that can be birth. We stop God from producing. I want you to understand the act is an excuse that God used to produce it. So if you don't do it, it won't come. So if you say that you don't want children, then don't do it. But you can't say, Lord, I want to do it and still don't have a child. That is cheating and God will not accept that. Please, I want to take my time. I'm so calm, you know. Normally, I'm that somebody back, back, back. But this time, I want to be very quiet and calm. People have been asking me this question. Because some pastors are affirming that. Some holiness preachers are affirming that. I don't know which kind of Bible they are using. I don't know what kind of spirits. Their spirits that is leading a preacher is very, very important. If a preacher has a murder spirit, know that that preacher is not from God. I don't gain anything out of that. So why can't I tell you what the word of God says? God killed Onan. God killed him. Genesis chapter 38 verse 11. Then said Judah to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, Remain, remain a widow at the father's house till, till Shelah, my son. Till Shelah, my son, grows. For he said, Leaves per adventure. He died also in his brother's stead, as Tamar was basically accused to be the person who is killing the sons of Judah. Among the children of Israel, Judah had a very small family because his sons were very wicked. They were not doing what God wanted them to do. So God killed the first son and killed the second son. The third son, the man was afraid. I am old enough to give another child. So how can I allow my son to go through that? When we read the process, it came to pass 
that Judah refused to give his uh, son to Tamar to marry. So at the end of the day, Judah found himself sleeping with his own daughter-in-law. That was a very sad story. So when Judah thought that Tamar was a prostitute, he went in and slept with Tamar. And that girl at first time became pregnant. To clear her mind off. The father-in-law, you come and try me. Your children that you are not having is not me. Come and try me. So eventually, Tamar gave birth for Judah. And the boys were twins. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 38, verse 27. And it came to pass in the time of her travail, that behold, the twins were in her womb. And it came to pass when she travailed, that he, the one put out of his hand, and the midwife took and bound up his hand with scarlet thread, saying, This came out first. And it came to pass, as he drew back his hand, and he, behold, his brother came out, and she said, How hast thou broken forth? This bridge be upon thee, therefore his name was called Perez. And afterwards came out his brother, that had the scarlet tread upon his hand, and his name was Zerah. Perez eventually gave birth. Through Perez, we got uh, Boaz. Through Boaz, we got Jesse. Through Jesse, we got David. Through David, we got Joseph and Mary. Through Joseph and Mary, we got Jesus Christ, the Messiah. See where the, see Satan wanted to cut off the Messiah to come. From Genesis chapter number 3, the verse number 15, God said that a woman that you have destroyed will conceive. Satan had always fighting against women. Satan is trying to veil women that women are wicked. Satan doesn't like women. He hates women. Satan hates women. He knows that when he cares a womb of a woman, everything that comes out of woman will be cursed. So he's always targeting women, always fighting against women. You can imagine if Tamara didn't give birth to these two boys, where would the Messiah come from? And the Lord has already promised, the Lord has already prophesied that the seed of Abraham will come the Messiah. And when David, uh, uh, Jacob, blessing his children, he said that Judah would travail. Through Judah would the Messiah come. Jacob prophesied on that. Joseph, Jacob prophesied on that. So you can imagine, how could this prophecy be fulfilled? How could it be? If Tamar were not going to conceive and give birth. Understand this. Whenever we are studying the word of God, I want you to understand. Childbirth begin in the hands of God. Turn with me and let us read something from the Isaiah chapter number 44 verse 24. Isaiah chapter 20, 44 verse 24. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer who formed you from the womb. Who forms baby? Mama sperm. That is sperm and mother, mother's egg. No, it is God that forms babies. It is the act of God. And if you say that you don't want God to function any longer, then you are cutting him off from his ministry. You don't want God to exist. You don't want God to operate. It is sin. It is sin. The Lord God who formed you from the womb of your mother. I am the Lord who made all things. Who alone stretched out the heavens, who spread out the earth by myself. Everything that is being done, I do it by myself. Leave it for me. Let me do it. The same Isaiah chapter 49 verse 15. I want you to understand life begin in the hands of God. Life begin in the hands of God. So when life begins and you say you want to cut it off, God is going to deal with you severely. Don't allow those adulterous pastors, those demonic pastors who claim that they are preaching truth, who claim that they are working with God, but they are spreading evil and promoting people. Any Christian sister 
that do contraception is going to hell. Be careful with that. God doesn't care who is preaching. God is not respectful of a person. He is going to be judged humanity by his word. Oh God, my pastor told me that. And so what? What does my word say? My, one of my brother, brother Michael, is having a program earlier on. And I asked a question, how can I know that I'm being deceived? How can I know that I'm being deceived? I love the answer that the brother gave, but that wasn't the answer that I was looking for. The brother said that you need to know that what the pastor is preaching is in line with the word of God. What if I don't know the word of God? What if I don't know the word of God? I don't read Bible. So I believe that what Pastor Gabriel tells me is the word of God. So I take it. What Pastor Paul Rica says is the word of God. What Pastor Kumuyi says is the word of God. What holiness preachers are saying is the word of God. I believe that. Is it true? They are not all truths. So I need to challenge these things. I'm teaching this one not for even Catholics, Roman Catholic, Protestants, they all fight against contraception. They are against that. At the early stage, Martin Luther King, he fought against that. Abortion, contraception, segregation, discrimination, murder of the innocents had always been abolished, but it has been the hand of God. That children will be destroyed. When you go to the book of Exodus, it happened. Before Moses was born, the law was made up on the entire Egypt. That all male-born babies need to be killed. This is the spirit of Satan. Killing infants. Killing them. So if that is the case, then I won't give birth at all. Why? Because they were afraid when Israel is outgrowing in their number, they will become their enemy, a thorn in their own flesh, and fight against them. So the Pharaoh, who didn't have the mind of God, said that, let us kill all the children. Do you think that if I endure this, contraception was there, were they not going to install contraception instead of killing the babies? Hmm. Have you got a point? If in those days the knowledge have increased in such a way, there is a contraception. Are they not going to introduce contraception to the Egyptian women? And that is what it's been done. There is a man who is a billionaire. What is his name? He is the owner of um um what we do we call him? Bill Gates. Contraception is being produced and promoted by Bill Gates. They are producing condoms. They are producing the uh, all kinds of method of contraception. They are producing them. What is their aim? Their aim is one, they want to reduce human rates. Do they have the right, him and his wife? They've got money. Satan have given them money. And what they are using that money for is contraception. Do you know who Begate is? It's a free missionary. Whenever I teach this, I want to bring Pastor Paul Rica attention here, sir. I respect your ministry, but I want you to go back in fasting and seek and repent because you and your wife, you are bringing millions into hellfire. When I teach, I hate contraception. I call all whoring more people to listen to me. That man is leading you to hellfire. I am not afraid to say that. It is abomination. It is a curse that that man is pouring on your hearts. I'm not attacking him. I'm attacking the demon in his heart. Misleading people to hellfire. I've been praying for him every now and then. And he's standing publicly and standing that contraception is biblical. Can he give me any scripture that says that if you don't want a baby any longer, go and take contraception. Is that where in the scripture? But I can give you all kind of scripture related to the fact that it is a curse for a person to do that. Yesterday, a sister asked me, Brother Gabriel, I have already done it. I said, go and do the restitution. Because hers, she had the permanent one. Whenever she gives birth, she goes through all kinds of conditions. I don't blame her. She didn't know God. She was under curse. 
Had she known God, there would never be any complications. There shouldn't be complications, a child of God, when you're giving birth. If your way pleases God, if your way pleases God, God will put the, the child in your womb, will produce. I got two children out of wedlock. My first son was out of wedlock. My missus son was out of wedlock. And both those children, they suffered. My fiancé, or that woman that conceived my first child for me, the lady went to labor for three days. Consider the things in regard to that childbirth. I was crying, the Lord, take that child out of my life. Take him out of my life. I was crying and weeping. And the boy was about to die. So I said, I said, no, please give him that boy. Please, Lord, I repent. I was afraid of reproach. And I'm giving this as a testimony to tell you. Now the boy is 22 year old boy. He is like me. He resembles everything is like me. I'm very happy to have a son now. My wife also gave birth out of that because we were rebelling against God. When God said we should marry, we said no. We were arguing and God said I will still bring you back. I will still bring you back. God brought us back. Where both of us out of our rebellion, we have two boys out of wedlock. When we meet together, God gave us two daughters. After the two daughters, I said, Lord, we have four. If it is possible, enough is enough. Take it out. The Lord said, all right, I've accepted the, the, the facts. Beloved, I am talking out of my pains. I'm talking out of my pains. I know what I'm talking about. It's not an easy thing. If you want to work with God, accept the will of God. If you don't accept the will of God, Allah will be punished here on earth or you go through disgrace. Allow God to influence your life. Allow God to lead your life and stop trying to do things. Stop trying to do that. Why I brought this thing into it is that those boys, they suffered before they came on earth. Now, when we married... Our first daughter, it lasted my wife about three hours for her to go through birth pains. And my big girl was there. She's now 14 year old, a 13 year old girl. My big girl came 14. My big girl came out. Then my last born, who is 12 year old girl, I was the one became who midwife that brought a baby onto this earth. Why did you become the midwife, Brother Gabriel? We were living in Germany, advanced country. My wife was pregnant. Nothing is worrying her. I wake up one Saturday morning. Uh, was it Thursday? Thursday morning. I went out. I didn't take my mobile phone. I hate taking mobile phones in those days. So I didn't take my mobile phone. I just drove out. Immediately I drove out. The birth pain hit my wife. I spent only two hours outside. Two hours outside. When I came home, my wife was lying down. I said, my God. I called a sister, a Christian sister. I said, please come. And she said, Pastor, what are you doing? Call the doctor. Call the ambulance. I didn't know what to do. So I called the ambulance. And I told them, I'm very crucial. You must be here as quick as possible. They ran. People, people, when they came. We were on the third floor. The lift was not working. And it's, it's one, one step down before you join the lift. And when we were bringing my wife out of the room to join the lift, the baby was already coming. The water was coming. So on the stairway, the water was flowing. So immediately, these uh, 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 pyramid, the doctors were just running into the, uh, the house top. And they said, well, do you have everything there in your room? Because uh, the situation is we can't bring your daughter. You can't bring your, your wife into our ambulance. I said, what not? They said, no, 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 we can't. Let us go down. So at the entrance of my house, we spread immediately, we spread something on the floor. My wife was lying down and the baby was coming. So I was just pulling it and I caught the, <laughs> the novel. I caught it myself. What am I saying this? If your way pleases God, you won't go through that birth pains. It was very sad. After she has given birth, by law, she needs to go to the hospital and, and check if everything is fine. I took her to the hospital 
The ambulance took her to the hospital. The next one hour, uh, 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 two hours, they said, well, your wife needs to go home. I said, what? Can't we keep her for two days? Or said, for what reason? She, there is nothing wrong with her. They said, we can't even register that your baby, that your baby was born here at this hospital. So on my daughter's registration, birth registration card, she was born at home. <laughs> She was born at home. The, the hospital wouldn't say that we, because they can't endorse that they gave birth. They, 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 they were the people that uh, held the birth. Which doctor is going to sign? Which midwife is going to endorse? So they sent her home. In the next two hours, sign. People go to hospital and go through pains. If your way pleases God, that complication, that because of complication, I don't want to give birth again. Because of co complication, I want to do this Syrian things and that and that. If your way pleases God, you're not afraid. Do you understand that? Baby are formed in the womb of a woman by God. And any person that tells you that contraception is accepted in the sight of God is a witch. It's a devil. It's a devil. I don't care who that person is. Unless they change their mind because they are bringing every person that listening to them and follow those teachings, they are bringing them to hellfire. Abortion is abominable. Contraception is abominable. It's sin against God. Why? Because can a woman forget her nursing child that she should have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even these may forget, yea, I will not forget you. Why? Because you are a child of God. A mother can forget her own child. But since you are a product of God, God will not forget you. We represent God. We have the image of God. I have the DNA of God. You and me, we have the DNA of God. We belong to God. We don't belong to our parents. And that is why my mother and my father cannot decide either I should serve God or not. Those of you who are so bound with a tradition, oh my, if I change my, my religion as a Christian, I, I, I move away from Islamism, my parents will kill me. They are not your parents. They are not. God is your parent. God gave birth to you. Your mother was just a recipient. She received it. And your wicked mother said that I don't want you to come on earth. I don't want you to come on earth. Would you love your mom? If you come to know that when you were pregnant, your mother tried many times wanted to abort you. Will you love this mother? It's a wicked mother. What about Brother Gabriel? Uh, uh, my, 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 somebody raped a woman and the girl says she doesn't like a baby. I don't accuse you because somebody raped you. I don't accuse you. It's a wicked person that raped a woman and conceived a child. But that child has a father. And that child comes from God. You can't kill the baby. You don't like the baby because you don't love him. You don't understand who the baby is. He is part of you, sister. That girl is part of you. Remove that thought. Somebody raped me. And so what? Somebody raped you. Yes, I pity that. I'm very sorry that somebody raped you. But don't let that child become a victim. So there is no need for you to say that I don't like the baby. You need to give birth to that child. We are living in Europe here where abortion has been accepted. But every doctor that is conducting abortion, that doctor will go to hell and drink the blood of those children. Every woman that is conducting abortion, that woman will go to hell and drink the blood of that baby. Every man, so two, three people are involved in abortion. The doctor who did it, the girl and the father of those child, they will go to hell. Unless they repent of their sin. If they repent, those children are in heaven. They were blood. They were human beings already. Contraception is breaking that blood to form. It's literally causing yourself to be a barren. And to be a barren is a casting. There shouldn't be any barren in the house of God. So there was no woman that served God that was a barren. If you are not conceiving... Put this thing in the eyes of God. I am promoting people who are not conceiving to be very sincere and cry to God until their name is changed. It is a sin to go to hell with barrenness. It's barrenness. If a woman is a barren, most cases, there shouldn't be any barrenness, other demonic attack or the, the wicked things of that woman. 
one of my aunties, when my auntie was a young lady at a secondary school, she fell in love with a gentleman that eventually became her husband. They grew and became mighty. The man became famous lawyer in Ghana. He became even a party, one of a Ghanaian party. He became a president of it. He became famous, but he never had a baby with my auntie. Why? In their childhood, when my auntie was at the secondary school, my auntie conceived with a fear. She did abortion. And in course of that abortion, her womb, the child died in her womb. Before she was aware, the baby was decayed. And therefore, they had to go and do operation. So my auntie's womb was removed. So my auntie is one of the women that never had a child. I think we have only two people in my family that never had a child. I don't know the other cousin, the story behind that. But I believe that that cousin might have done something wrong. In my family, you don't need babies. Don't try if you don't give birth. Don't try in my family. Don't try because if you come there, you have it. You have it. Don't try. Why am I saying all these things? It is a curse thing for a child of God not to have a baby. So if you're a Christian and you're not conceiving, ask God. And if you're a Christian and you are using contraception to avoid childbirth, you are not only cursing the children you have given birth, but you are also cursing your generation and the future. Avoid that. I was not teaching this. After we have had four children, we say, Lord, we don't want it again. So at a point, I was thinking, okay, let me go and sterilize myself. My wife said, that if a woman does it, she's going to be putting up a weight. And I love my wife. I said, okay, let me go and do it. My foolish senses. I thought that contraception was good. I thank God that God saved me not to do that. I don't know what my life would have been. And that is why I'm using all these things. The enemy is tempting us to do all kinds of evil things. It is not the will of God for a woman to go through that. So, Bragebra, now uh, we have four children. We have five children. We don't have money. So, we don't have wants in the child. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord and pray to God. That God, we are very grateful that we don't have much. We don't want more children. And we don't have influence. We don't have a right to control them. So, Lord, we put our trust and our confidence in you. For 12 good years, we have been praying, Lord, we don't need a child. And the Lord have answered our prayer. We have had four. And we want to help others also. So, please, that four is enough. And to be honest with you, the Lord has been faithful. At the beginning, we were helping God. We didn't know. Until a friend of mine came to me and said, Gabriel, you are teaching holiness. And you are practicing contraception. Don't you know that it is abominable? Do you know the spirit behind contraception? Do you know the spirit behind those medication? Do you know the spirit behind it? It is a murder spirit. A murder. And no murder will go to heaven. No murder will go to heaven. Psalm 71 verse 6. Upon you I have leaned from before my birth. Upon you have I leaned from before my birth. You are he who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually yours. You are the one who took care of me in my mother's womb. Baby begin before birth. Jeremiah chapter number 1 verse 5. This is what the Lord told Jeremiah. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before I formed you in the womb, and before you were born, I consecrated you. Before you were born, oh my dear, consecration was set apart, set apart for my goodwill. Do you know how many prophets that you are bought in them? Do you know how many doctors you are bought in them? Oh, God is taking people to hell, and they see babies there. Doctor is written on his forehead. Lawyer, a, a preacher, a king. President, not alcoholics, nothing evil. Every child is a potential, a, 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 a destiny holder. So when you abort them, or when you refuse to allow them to come on this earth, you will answer. You will answer. Muslims are giving birth. Hindus are giving birth. What kind of children are they producing in the society? We need God-fearing people that have a fear of God. The Lord told Abraham, he said, As for you, Abraham, I know that you will fear me and you will teach your children how to follow my commandments. The reason why God made a covenant with Abraham, because he knew Abraham was going to teach his children. 
In the children, in the life of Israelites, there is nothing like contraception. They don't, they don't protest us. Why Christianity has fallen in the hands of a wicked man, heartless man who don't have hearts for humanity. Because they have made a covenant with Satan and they are teaching a, a demonic teachers, murdering spirits. There is nothing wrong for young boys and young girls to have condom. There is nothing wrong for young boys and young girls to have condom. Why? To avoid transfer of sickness. Brother, you are avoiding transfer of sickness. But you are also avoiding transfer of babies. And you are somebody who is cutting off the process. The cycle. Your mother gave birth to you. And when it came to you, you cut it off. You are a wicked person. And you are under curse. Pray that God will forgive you. Pray that God will forgive you. And God will forgive all those pastors. That they will come back and repent. Who are teaching that contraception is accepted. It is sin and it is forbidden and it's abominable in the sight of God. If your pastor can give you any scripture that God says that it is allowed. Galatians chapter 1 verse 15. But when he who has set me apart before I was born. Apostle Paul also affirmed that. Before I was born. Me, Gabriel, before I was born. God has set me aside. I come from a polygamy home. My mother, my father gave birth to 13 children with the other wife. I am equal to the 12 children. I am equal to the 12 child of my daughter, my, my the other woman. The 12 child. I am equal to that. Because the 11 child is older than me. My sister, she is one year older than me. So I am the 12th. And before be, behind me came other children. We are 18 children. 18. I asked my daddy, why did you marry to give birth to 10 children before you? Because the 10th child also is older than my father, my mother's firstborn with my, ma, 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 my dad. My 10th brother is older than my senior brother before me. So he's the 11. My sister is the 12. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, and uh, I am supposed to be the 13. I'm supposed to be the 13 if we put it in that way. I asked my dad, why do you do that? He said, when I'm married to that woman, I never find fulfillment. There was no happiness in my life. I said, wow. So literally it means that that woman was not the woman that you're supposed to marry from childhood. There was no fulfillment. So whenever I'm married to your mom and I have peace, I have fulfillment, I say, wow, I don't blame you, daddy. It's because of me that you came and gave birth to. I am the reason why you committed that polygamy. But you are not free unless you ask God to forgive you, daddy, you are going to hell. <laughs> and my daddy was about to die. I led him to the Lord. When I have uh, my heaven encounter, I have different encounter. But the one that I will never forget, the one that the Lord took me to some places, I didn't see my daddy there. Daddy wasn't there. I don't know whether he made it or not. I don't know whether he made it or not. Why am I saying all these things to you? I want to affirm that God plants babies in the womb of a woman. Apostle Paul said this, But when he who has set me apart before I was born, before you were born, God has set you apart. How many children are you refusing to allow them to come here? There is a pastor called Pastor Jesse Duplantis is an American preacher. He's one of the thieves and arm robbers who are collecting money. <laughs> Please forgive me, uh, uh, Jesse, if you hear that. Stop collecting people's money and preach salvation, holiness and righteousness and truth. Tell people that hell is on their way and stop uh, 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 teaching them lies that will lead them to live in sin. With all kinds of jewelries, makeups, and eyelashes, and all this that you people are affirming in your churches in America. It's because of you that the curse is coming upon America. American preachers, you are the people bringing curse upon American people. Because you are not preaching the truth. You are liars and collecting money, and have money and, and, and bragging all the time. Before Jesse became one of the armed robbers, the Lord took him to heaven. And according to his testimony... He saw some little, little insects, human, human soul like were little insects. And they were just fuming around the face of the Almighty God. And the soul was speaking, make me a soul. Make me a soul. And the God would breathe in. 
when God breathes upon those little, little, tiny uh, insects, they tend to become human beings. And the angels will pick them. Angels will pick them. And wherever they see that women, men and women are meeting, then they will drop those children in the womb of their parents. Do you understand? It's a mystery. How souls are made. It's a mystery. Souls in heaven, they want to come here. They want to come here. Why? Because souls that will be rewarded in heaven are souls that have lived here on earth and had overcome. Revelation chapter 1. Those that will overcome. Only the overcomers will get a reward. So when those children are in heaven, they want to come here. They want to come here. And by you are saying that, you don't want those children to come. Don't you think that you are making yourself a problem? I'll finish my case. There are so many scriptures that affirm that childbirth is the will of God. Babies begin in the hands of God. Number two, man has no right to choose who is to be born or not to be born. Genesis chapter 38. No man have the right to choose. No man have the right to choose. Number three, God must be trusted. God must be trusted. Genesis, the chapter number, uh, what is the number again? Let's read Genesis chapter number 25. And Isaac, verse 21, and Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was barren. Isaac trusted in God and gave the upper hand of who the child should be in the hands of God. You may have so many reasons. Oh, Baba, Baba Gabriel, we, we, what is your reason? Imagine had your mother have the same reason. Will you be born? Will you be born? Whom among the children that you have that you wish to die? Whom among them? Why do you want to kill the children? A story that a sister wrote on Facebook or a brother wrote on Facebook that I will never forget. A couple that have received a baby. I think the baby was very young. Let's say six, seven months. And they couldn't control themselves. They couldn't wait. They met again and another baby came. And the lady said, no, I can't. I mean, it's too early. I can't give birth to another child that they are going to be two under one. I can't do that. They say they're going to be two under two. Because nine months, until nine months, this one will be what? One year, five months. So the lady said it's going to be very difficult. So she went to her gynecologist and said, please, can you abort this baby for me? And the doctor was a Christian. I said, how do you want to do such a wicked things? I can't do that for you. The woman said, no, dog, no, please. Give all kind of a reason. And then the doctor said, okay, can you give me the baby in your hands? So what do you want to do? He said, I want to kill this one so that the one that is coming up can live. I can't kill the one who is in your womb, but I can kill the one that you have already given birth to. And the woman said, doctor, are you so wicked? You are very wicked. You are the most wicked doctor I've ever seen in my life. You want to kill my baby? He said, woman, I need to report you to a police. I must report you to a police. You want me to kill the baby in your womb. But the one in your hand, you don't want me to kill him. Does it make sense to you? Whom among your brethren do you want him dead? Whom among your siblings do you wish him dead? Why do you want to kill the babies who have not been born yet? It doesn't make sense to you, selfish, ignorant person who have been destined to go to hell fire because that is where your heart has been. And therefore, you want to listen to Paul Rica, who is saying that contraception is not sin. You want to listen to him and he's bringing you to hell because that's where he is going. If he doesn't change, if he doesn't change that foolishness that he's doing over there, traveling around, traveling around to America, win a soul and make them wicked more than they are. Stop that witnessing because you are bringing people to hellfire. You and Linda. Saying that, uh, 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 what is her name? Sister, uh, 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 what is her name? Sister uh, 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 Claire is in hellfire. What concerns you if that sister goes to hell? What profit will you get? That sister is in heaven. Why are you doing all these things? Change your mind, sister. Change your hearts because you are misleading 
hurry more people to hellfire. And I will continue to witness to hurry more people because I want them saved. I want them saved. If you are deeper life and that is what your teaching is, I want you to saved. I want you saved because very dangerous teachings. The pastors who are affirming that contraception is righteousness. Deuteronomy chapter number 7 verse 14. You shall be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or a female barren among you. And I said that when you put on contraception, you render yourself as a barren. Why? Because the hormone that produces baby become weak. You render yourself as a barren. And that is how barren women are. To render yourself barrenness is sin. It is evil in the sight of God. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 1. Sing, O barren one, who didn't bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud. You who have not been in labor. For the children of the desolate one will be more than the children of her who is married. Say yes, the Lord. The Lord said rejoice. Rejoice because I am bringing children. Rejoice. I have two sisters in my ministry that they are newly married about two, three years ago and they have not given birth yet. And it's, they are crying every now and then. And when I hear their cry, when I hear their cry, I weep with them. I say, Lord, answer this young beautiful girls. Grant them one, at least give them one. It will be enough for them. And you have had three. You have had two. You have had one. And because of your selfish thinking, you said that it is not good for me to give baby again. And you are cursing yourself. You are cursing yourself. Genesis chapter 29 verse 31. When the Lord said, saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel's womb was closed. When Leah saw, God, God saw that Jacob doesn't love Leah. Why did the Jacob didn't love Leah? Because according to the divine plan, Leah was supposed to be the husband to Esau. Leah was supposed to be Esau's wife. But Leah said, I don't like Esau because he doesn't choose the ways of God. She cried and cried and cried. So every now and then when you see her, her eyes is full. So the Bible said that she had problem with her eyes. She was in tears. And Jacob said, no, 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 my wife is, 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 is uh, Rachel. When I hear people speaking against Jacob, I say, you don't know the mind of God. You don't understand Bible. If you really understand Bible, Jacob was a very genuine and sincere person. He was genuine. When his mother wanted him to change, go and cook food and go and call and say, no, daddy, which I catch me. I don't want to do that. And if you don't have a man who is in tune with God, you lead your children to do things that are abominable. Listen to this. Jacob gave birth to two boys. Uh, 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 Rebecca gave birth to two boys. According to your tradition and my tradition, the boy who comes out first is the first child, isn't it? Twins. The child who comes out of first is the first child. The one who comes out late is the second child. The blessing is supposed to go to be the ch first child. Do you think it is fair? We were born in the same hour. The same day we were pregnant, daddy gave a, a impregnated us. <laughs> God put all of us in the same womb for two, the same time. It is unfair. So Jacob being wise said, no, these boys were twins. I can't choose the one and say that this is the first. I need to cry to God and say, who should inherit me? Isaac refused to do that. That was the responsibility because of the ignorance and negligence of Isaac, it led Jacob to go through what he went through. I don't blame Jacob. I blame his father Isaac. When I get to heaven, the first question I'm going to ask Isaac, why did you do that to Jacob? You were unfair. You should have prayed and see the face of God. When Jacob grew up, he gave birth to 12 children. And when he was blessing the 12 children, he came to Oh my dear. Hallelujah. He came to the sons of Joseph. Apparently, Joseph was supposed to be the firstborn of who? Of Jacob. You don't understand scripture. Leah wasn't Jacob's wife. The concubine that gave birth, none of them was Jacob's wife. 
So the first ball that was supposed to have the double portion in Jacob's life was Joseph. So when Joseph was blessing his children, he brought, he brought Manasseh and, and, and what is his name again? Ephraim. He brought Manasseh and Ephraim and he laid he lay his hands upon them. And you know what he did? He crossed his hands like this. <laughs> it's my father's mistake. That have brought me all this stress in my life. Bring both your children to me. I will not do what my daddy did. Oh, the Bible says, Jacob, when he was blessing his children, he was leaning upon the staff. Negligence. Jacob's story is one of the stories that breaks my heart. Because Jacob suffered. Jacob went through all kinds of things because of Isaac. He has to go through his uncle, and the uncle was also not a different person. He was also a twist. He was somebody who was deceiving Jacob. Deceived Jacob in many times. Jacob became rich because in a dream, the Lord revealed to him how he became successful. In the dream, he saw that when those animals were meeting, and there was a calf, there was a tree calf. Who gave him that vision? It wasn't God. It was God. If God wants to bless you, he will bless you. If God wants to bless you, allow God, put your trust and confidence in God. Jacob trusted in God. Jacob trusted in God. So my Bible says that when Jacob was dying, he was leaning on the staff. He was leaning upon God. God guide me. Guide me through. Let me prophesy on these children. So he laid his hands upon his grandchildren. Ah, Manasseh. He was supposed to be the firstborn. But Jacob just twisted his hands like this. He crossed his hand. I said, boy, according to human tradition, the firstborn should carry the birthright. But according to God's plan, the secondborn is the one that carries God's rights. So Jacob crossed his hand. And Joseph removed his daddy, what are you doing? You are going out of the law. You are going out of the tradition. Christianity is tapping out of human tradition. Christianity is tapping out of what man thinks. Think with God. Reason with God. And therefore you can walk in the counsel of God. Why have we made God so wicked? So even when he came to the land distribution, Joseph had a double portion of the land. They couldn't change it. Manasseh had to equal the same as Judah, as Reuben, as Simon, as well as, uh, uh, what is that name? I won't forget these boys, their names. Joseph should have had a double portion. Why? Why? Because Joseph is the firstborn of Isaac in the sight of uh, Jacob in the sight of God. Why? He was the firstborn to Rachel. And Rachel was in the sight of God, the wife. God will never violate. Man will try to change it, but God will never change it. There are some of you that when your mother was giving birth to you, she tried all kinds of things, but it never succeeded. God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for your life. It might be ashamed. But oh pastor, there are even pastors that will carry their children. Because the girl has brought a shame. The girl couldn't stand. Pastor, if you don't teach your children the way of God. If you don't bring your children in the fear of God. They will have premarital sex. And then a child which is ready for premarital church uh, says That child must be premarital birth. And you shouldn't be ashamed of. Don't attach yourself to the shame or disgrace that your children brought upon you. One of the things that made Jacob suffer a lot. And he began to curse his children. You are bringing shame upon me. That is the area that Jacob also failed. He didn't love Rhea, Leah. So everything that those boys did. He didn't like it. He didn't like it. Can you imagine Jacob giving a nice beautiful dress. To Joseph. 
and uh, in, 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 in he stirred up the hatred. He stirred up the hatred among his brothers, which are very bad. That is why I said I don't go for polygamy. It's bad. But a brother asked me, Brad Gabriel, why would God allow the Old Testament people to do polygamy? God didn't allow that. God didn't allow that. And if God allowed that, he allowed it because those days, children were not many. And God wants many children. And now today, people don't want to give children. People don't want it. We are living in the time where evil men are ruling. President Obama came and legalized abortion in America. Now here in the world that we are living in, UK, in everywhere we have legalized homosexual lifestyle. And the homosexuals can give birth. Homosexuals can give birth. If a homosexual says that I don't want to sleep with a woman, why does he want a baby then? And do you know what they are doing? They are now bringing their children also to be homosexuals. And Christians who are supposed to give birth, they are doing contraception. Don't you think that the devil is ruling the world and ruling even the Christian homes? You go to church, you lift up holy hands. Your hands is dirty. Your hands is dirty. Every month you take pills. You have injection, you have quail, you have all kinds of things. You've been sterilized that you don't want to have a baby. And you call yourself a, a, a holy child. Go and remove those things that can be removed. Those irrevocable, cry to God and ask God to rep for repentance. Other than that, when you die, you are going to hell. You are going to hell. Bring your heart before God and let God remove the shame. When you go to First Samuel, there was a woman that was called Hannah. She was not conceiving and she cried bitterly in the sight of God. In the Bible, every woman that was not conceived is a pain. Leah gave birth. Gave birth one, two, three. And said, God is going to love me. And they named their children according to the name of Messiah, Jesus Christ. All the 12 sons of Jacob, they are all related to the Messiah, the Redeemer. Because they saw their children as their inheritance. Children are inheritance. Children are inheritance. Let me find out if I can get the meaning, the meaning of the names, the meaning of the of the sons of uh, of Jacob. Ladies and gentlemen, understand this: that God has a plan for every one of us. Every one of us, God has a plan for them, and His plan is to bring us into eternal peace. Understand that. Understand that. Because God has designed us for a purpose. And that design is to bring us to his expected end. So I want you to understand. I want you to understand. That. Uh, God designed can never be aborted by men. He has planned for us and no purpose of his can be thwarted or can be aborted. God can do everything and no purpose of his, no purpose of his can be thwarted. Everything that God has said shall surely come to pass. If any man want to change it, it shan't be possible. If any man want to change it, it will never be possible. So let us put our trust and our confidence in God. The one who is more than able. And the one who is more than willing. Who is more than willing to bring us into a place of joy. Understand this because it will change your uh, uh, focus towards God. Children are inheritance. They are inheritance. And in the Old Testament, when a person uh, gives birth, they are happy. In the New Testament, when a, a woman gives birth, she is not happy. Why? Because we want the breast for our husbands. <laughs> All right. Reuben. Reuben was from Leah. So Leah conceived and bore a son, and she called his name Reuben. For she said, the Lord has really seen my affliction. The Lord has seen my affliction. If God sees our affliction and give us something that is a rewarding of our affliction. Now, therefore, my husband will love me. So, 
Reuben means a child out of our affliction. This word has put us into affliction. The reason why the Messiah came, he came to take us out of our affliction. Now Simeon, the second child, according to Genesis, uh, the Bible says that, and she conceived again and bore a son, and she named her Simeon, that I am unloved. He has therefore given me this son also, and she called him Simeon. She conceived again and gave birth to Levi. Mm? Became, meaning I am so attached. So Reuben means God have seen. Jehovah sees. God have seen me. Simeon means God heard. Levi means God is attached. Then Leah gave another birth. And she named his, he, he, uh, she named him Judah. She named him Judah. Judah means praise. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Meaning Judah. And when Leah saw that she's no more conceiving, she gave her maid servant, Belhal. Belhal, which is Richard servant Richard servant was the first one when Richard saw that she was not conceiving a man giving birth with his cousins <laughs> that is very that is very dangerous so Bilal also gave birth and Richard said God has judged my case and he has also heard my voice and gave me a son therefore she called his name Dan Dan Means God is my judge. God is my judge. Then Bilal gave another son. Mean and the riches said, With great wrestling, I have wrestled with my sister. Yes, I have not wrestled with my sister. And the Lord has given me a child. His name is Naphtali. Naphtali means wrestling. Wrestling. Genesis chapter 30, verse number 6. Now when we come to verse 11... Then Zilpah, when Leah saw that she is no longer conceiving, she gave her maid servant Zilpah to Jacob. Oh, this man, he went in for one and he got three. Buy one and get three. That is how this world is. Where that promotes sin, where that promotes evil. So, in the nutshell, in the nutshell, the Leah also gave. Uh, her daughter, uh, her, her male servant, and uh, the male servant gave a son called God, mean troop, troops. After that, Zepa gave another boy called Asha, means happy. Leah said, now I am happy, for the daughter will call me blessed. So she called the name of the boy Asha, meaning that all these names were not given by Jacob. <laughs> I don't know where he was. He wasn't a happy man. If you live in environments where people cannot see God and hear God, and they cause you to do all things. So Jacob was just sleeping with these ladies and just giving birth. He was so detached in life. Jacob was so detached in life. I want you to understand that when Jacob grew up, he became so dissatisfied with his children because none of them was bringing him joy. I, I said something earlier on. That I want to take you there and finish it. Genesis chapter 49. Genesis chapter 49 verse 1 to 27. When Jacob was about to die, he has to bless his children. This is the blessing and the pronouncement that he pronounced on them. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might and the beginning of my strength, the excellence of dignity and the excellence of my power. Unstable as water, you shall not excel. Jacob cursed the boy. Jacob cursed Simeon and Levi also. Why? Because Levi and Simeon went in into their father bed and defiled the father bed. They slept with one of the father's concubines. That was not good. That was not good. When he came to Judah, that is the most important part because I quoted that quotation that if Judah refused and continuously disallowed Tamar to give birth, what might have happened to Judah race? And Judah, when he came to Judah, he said, Judah, you are 
He whom your brother shall praise. Your name is praise. Judah, your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Mm. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Judah doesn't kill. He killed the Satan, the destroyer. The lion of the trap of Judah. He is destroying our enemies on our behalf. That was why we have the name Jesus Christ. He is a lion. You don't know him as a lion. He will bite and destroy all the enemies. Your father's children shall bow down before you. All your generations shall bow before this family, Judah. And lo and behold, Israel is bowing before Judah. Because out of Judah came the Messiah. And as lion, you shall rouse him. As lion, you shall rouse him. The scepter shall not depart from you, Judah. No, a lawgiver from between his feet. Until Shilon comes, until Shilon comes, and to him shall be the obedience of the people. Shilon is Jesus Christ. Until Shilon, the Savior, comes. So even Jacob for knew that Judah, and this time we don't know other Judah have children or not. Just say Jacob prophesied on Judah. That out of his children, Shilon, me Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the sent one, until Shiloh comes, until Shiloh comes, and to him shall be the obedience of all people. Understand this. Why am I saying all these things? I want you to understand the Lord God who has affirmed your birth from your mother's womb has a plan for you. There are so many plans that God has for you that you have no idea of. So I want you to understand when you come to the level to understand how God has created you, He has a purpose for you. So if you are married, and for some reason, you say that you don't want children any longer, I want you to understand, life begins in the hands of God. I want you to know man has no right to control birth. God has a right. If we can trust Him, if we can trust God, God is able to give us. I want you to know all contraception comes from the devil. It's not from God. It's the way Satan wants to cut off the plans of God for the increase in Genesis chapter 1. Increase and multiply. Increase and multiply. Satan wants to decrease man. Therefore, contraception, abortion is not from God. It's from Satan. It's from Satan. Children are the gift from God. So any person that says that I don't want gift from God, it's a curse. Children are a gift from God. And uh, barrenness is a curse. Barrenness is a curse. As well as your complication that leads to your birth control. It is my prayer that you send these teachings to brothers and sisters who are living and practicing contraception. The Lord said none of them will come into my kingdom. Any form of contraception. You don't have rights. Somebody asked me, Brother Gabriel, what about if you do like the natural way? Why natural way? Put your trust and your confidence in God. Every form of contraception is not accepted. Put your trust and confidence in God. If you're a child of God, you trust in God more than your strength. You trust in God more than the doctors. You trust in God more than your adulterous doctors, your demonic pastors. Who are saying that contraception is right. It has not been given to any person to decide who is to be born. Psalm 107 is definition a fruitful land into a salt waste because of the evil of the inhabitants. A fruitful land has been turned into a waste. Are you putting your life at waste? Are you bringing your life at waste? We have pastors who are causing us to be useless in this life. Contraception is forbidden. Abortion is forbidden. A child of God, take your hands off. If you are there, ask God to forgive you. Renounce everything that are redeemable. And turn away and give your heart to God. Because the time is fast running out. I'm very, very sad. That people are bringing themselves under curses. People are bringing themselves under curses. Those who render themselves cursed. 
those who render themselves, Psalm 107, a fruitful land unto a salty waste. A fruitful womb has been rendered as a waste. Women that are supposed to give birth to prophets, they are no more giving birth. And the women there who are not supposed to give birth, they are giving birth to demonic and adulterous children. They go to all these false prophets and they give them handband. They give them anointing oil. They give them all kinds of things. And those children that they are giving birth to, they are being destroyed. And when they bring all this material into their home, demons have taken hold of the children. If you remove your hand from contraception, the reason why the children that you have given birth, because the day that you put contraception in your womb, you have tied up your children under curse. All of the children that you are giving birth to, they are all under curse. Release them. Remove those contraception out of your life. Have you committed abortion before? If you have not repented when you go to hell, you are going to drink that blood. You are going to drink that blood. And the demons are going to pierce you like that. The same way that you treated those children in your womb, is the same way that God is going to treat you in his wrath. Don't joke with the wrath of God. Human beings are not in control. God is in control. Give the control of your life to God and allow him to, to, to channel your life. Allow him to do whatever he wants with your life. You are a porter, he's a clay. Uh, you are clay, he's a porter. We cannot be porters. We want to be porters. But Christ will continue to rule. And many are the devices in a man's heart. But it's the counsel of God that shall come to pass. Why don't you commit your ways unto the Lord? And trust him. That he will do what he has said. That he will do. Father, I thank you. I pray that this message will reach somebody's heart. And thank people unto you. Let them come closer to be part of your kingdom and your plans for their life. In Jesus' name. If you are listening to me and maybe you are doing contraception, you can't just throw it away. You need deliverance. After throwing that contraception away, you need deliverance. Because those demons cannot leave you alone. Because they can also affect your children that you have given birth to. You put a curse under your life. That quarrel is a curse. That medication that you are taking is a curse. That injection that you are taking every month is a curse. It costs you. And whenever you have those things, it's written, says, says, says on your forehead. If you die in those things, you have the mark of the beast. It is the mark of the beast. Unless you renounce those things, your forehead is written the mark of the beast. Anything that you receive from a man who is no godly person. I told you from the beginning that the chief corner of contraception is bill gates and bill gates is illuminati he's a free missionary he has got money satan has employed him and all that he's using his money to do is to buy contraception and send it to africa to curse the children of africa to buy condoms and give to people in africa for free to curse those children and people who are doing occultism they say that when they get your when they get a, a condom the condom is where they conceive a man, sperm. So they take men into a, a hotel, prostitutes that have been employed by those guys, they take men into a hotel and they take their sperm and they send it into the kingdom of darkness and destroy the life of those people. Be careful, those of you who are using condom. Be careful. And those of you who are throwing your sperm outside, you don't know who is getting in touch. There are demons around you. When you throw your sperm out, Satan will take it. Any man that you say, please give it to your husband. Give it to your husband. You husband that say, we don't want babies again. And therefore, when you, 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 you are going to get stroke. The withdrawal method, there is stroke attached to that. Men are getting stroke. There are so many kinds of sickness going on. If you don't want babies, brother, don't sleep with your wife. And you know that masturbation is also sin. It's dangerous sin. A Christian, you shouldn't think like this. You shouldn't think like that. Pray to God. The answer to contraception, the answer to abortion is to pray to God, know the will of God of your, for your life, and follow the mindsets of God. God doesn't forbid sex. Sex is not sin. It's not sin. Any person that will tell you says is sin, he doesn't know Bible. But sleeping with the wrong person, a person that you have not married, is sin. And sleeping with a person that you have not married is sin. Not only that, 
using different means apart from the one that will bring a baby on earth a man on top and a woman down in the outside of practicing of sin of sex is sin even in your marital bed a woman should not use her tongue during those acts licking oral sex I need to go deep because somebody needs to talk about this. I want to bring all this thing together. Mm -hmm. There are so many filthy things that women are doing and men are doing. A, a brother, a sister contacted me because her husband can no longer, her husband can no longer sleep with her. The man has become impotent. And therefore the man will use her tongue to satisfy his wife. There is one demonic and adulterous preacher in Ghana. His name is Heward Mills. He is a adulterous person. That man is demon walking around. He's turning around and winning so for the devil. All those of you who are in that pastor's church, he's Illuminati pastor. Turn away from Heward Mills. He said, all round says it's not sin. That man is a medical doctor. He said, whenever you are sleeping with your wife, you can use your tongue to do whatever you want. It breeds cancer. All these things are evil. And pastors are affirming. Oyakilome is one of the demonic people on earth. Oyakris, Oyakilome is one of the demonic people on earth. He said masturbation is not evil. When all these pastors are teaching all these things, and then the Porika, he said contraception is not sin. He has joined the demonic people on earth. Jesus doesn't know Porika any longer. The day he started teaching that, he had double face. Holiness revival movement, I am warning you. Pray over that man. Prove me wrong. Go on fasting and pray over this pastor that mentioned their name. They are demonic people leading you to hellfire. I bet you. Why are you selling all this thing, Pastor Gabriel? Do you hate them? Yes, I hate the spirit in them. Those spirits that are ruling these men that call themselves bishop and pastors, they are demons. They are all already in hellfire. They are waiting. Their souls are already in hell. Some of them, these pastors, God will show them. They don't, they don't tell you. They won't tell you this. Go and ask any man of God that you try to praise. Go and ask them. They won't tell you. They say, go and pray. They won't tell you. Me, my name is Adade. I am not afraid of anybody. Since I am helping people to come out of this man, I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven, so I want to open your eyes. If you are not married and you are sleeping with a man, you are going to hellfire. If you are living with a woman that you have not performed the marital rights, you have not paid a dowry, it doesn't matter whatsoever you are. You can be a bishop. You die, you are living in fornication, you go to hell. These are the reasons people don't want to give birth. And these are the reason we give birth to illegitimate, illegitimate children. And those children are vagabond children. They go way wild and do all kinds of foolishness. Because they are not growing up in family. Mother gave birth out of that and they don't love their children. They bring those children into their new marriage. And those children begin to create confusion and problems. Because you don't know that demon that gave birth to that child. <laughs> we have so many problems. Nobody is talking about that. Children born out of wedlock, 99% are demonic children. And they go out and bring confusion and commotion in your house. You need to pray for your children that we give birth out of that. Pray for them. And that is what I'm appealing to you. Before you give birth, marry. Before you will marry, go to God and pray. And let God show you your godly husband. Let God approve it. Don't let your husband, don't let your pastor, don't let your auntie, don't let your daddy decide who your husband is. Fast and pray. A sister came to me recently and said, Pastor, I have three men that are competing. This man come from Ibadan. This man come from uh, 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 Abiyokuta. I said, Sister, that's not my responsibility. Pastor, you have to pray. I said, who told you that I need to pray for you to get a husband? It's not my responsibility. I have to pray myself to get my wife. I have to pray. And therefore, you young lady who is listening to me, you've not married yet. God has the, the, the man for you. So pray. Continue to pray. And those of you who are married and your husband have become impotent, therefore you are using your tongue, you are using all kinds of chemicals to punch yourself. 
You're using all kinds of instruments to punch yourself. That is how Satan is going to do. They will open your private parts and they will spear your private part ladder because that's how you want it. And you prostitutes who are sleeping, a prostitute is any girl who have not married and sleeping with a man, you are prostitutes. You are prostitutes. And demons are going to sleep with you in hellfire. Snakes are going to pass through your vagina. And they come through your mouth. And the, and the demons will use a sharp edge. They will put it in fire and pierce your private part like that. 24-7. That is what he wants. Those of you who are using all kinds of trips. You are not married by pastor and you are using masturbation. You girls that are causing masturbation. You play up. You are sleeping with demons. You are sleeping with demons. Turn away and see deliverance. Maybe you have been listening to this teaching. And brother Gabriel, I'm bringing your awareness to the danger ahead of you. If you die in masturbation, you are going to hell. If you die even married, but you are practicing oral sex. You are practicing sinful sex. Apart from a man and a woman. God has designed a private part. Those two private parts. God is so on me. God is a designer. God is a designer. Now when those body meets, satisfaction takes place. Time needs to be set apart. Prepare yourself. Get time for each other. Get time for each other. Rubbing your hands around your chest, around your shoulders, that alone will make the job easier for you. Who is talking about that? Nobody, because I mean, no pastor should talk about that. I don't care. I will teach you that. My generation need to teach that. If we don't teach you, you are going to watch pornography. And the moment you watch pornography, and there are some Christians who are watching pornography, you are going to hell. Two demons are meeting, and are since we are married, there is nothing wrong with that. Who told you that? There are even Christians who are watching films. When you go to Ghana, they call it Kunkumbajia. That is a demonic uh, uh, thing. They call it a love film. If you are Christian and you watch this film, you are going to hell. Demons have become human beings and they are acting films. You call it a love film? No wonder when you sleep, demons want to sleep with you. No wonder when you go to bed, demons are chasing after you. You have opened the door. All these things are demonic entrance into our lives. Contraception are demonic entrance into our life. Abortion, open door. Any illegal activity, anything that God has not affirmed. This is one of the best teachings I have ever made. I am educating my generation. Somebody need to sit you down and tell you these things. Somebody. Men, when they enter into the woman, they feel satisfied. And you guys, do you think that when I sleep with him, he will love me? You are a fool. You are a fool. I'm a man. I am a man. And I'm telling you this. When a man releases his, his sperm, he has no sensitivity any longer. When a woman releases her, 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 her egg or whatsoever it is, she becomes more lover. A woman will say to the husband, but when your husband, when he releases, he, he just pull outside. Watch your husband. <laughs> My little sister, when she came to marriage, first time she said she cried. All that the man, five minutes, the man is finished. And the man will lie and begin to snore. Oh, oh. There are so many women, if they, don't, they, don't, they, they can't have org orgasm. There are women, Christian women, they don't have orgasm. You are a wicked man. You don't care about your wife. Oh, that every day you jump and then there are people who have given birth, three, four, five, six children, and they have never had orgasm. Oh, that they knew that they jump over their wife. You are wicked. Your woman also has sensitivity. <laughs> but Brother Gabriel, you are saying that we shouldn't use it, we shouldn't use it. Ah, and that is why you need to have time for your wife. You need to have time. What you can use your tongue to do, you can use your private part to do that. And your woman will have that satisfaction. May God deliver you from your bed. Many pastors and men, nobody is talking about these things. I said things that pastors are not talking about. That makes me an extraordinary person. <laughs> And I don't bear any shame. When I walk out here, I walk out as innocent, ignorant person. But if you want counsel, I can give you one to one. I won't go deep. Enough is enough. What I've said is enough. So if you want counseling, just contact me. And let us do one to one counseling. 
Father, we thank you for such a great honor and a great privilege and a great asset given unto us. That you will teach us all this knowledge and all wisdom. That will help us to make amend. Many are going through hell fire because of what they have contacted themselves with. Because of things that they brought into their Christian life out of ignorance. Because of past that they have allowed them to touch them. Because of items, oil. Because of uh, Florida water. Because of anointing what what. Uh, uh, all kinds of contaminated things that have put into their life. That have brought curse into their life. Lord, you have shown us these things. And I pray that my generation will be delivered. I pray that my generation will be saved. And they will come into divine knowledge. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I bless you. I worship you in Jesus' name. Maybe you are listening to me and I've said something that have put you into question mark and you become worried. Say, so, Bragebra, so if I die in this, I'm going to hell. I've mentioned something that God has opened your eyes. That this lifestyle that you are living is sinful. So, Bragebra, what can I do then? All that you can do is ask God to forgive you. It doesn't matter how far. The one that you can reverse, reverse it. The one that you can't reverse, leave it in the hands of God. The only one that you can reverse is when you have gone to the doctor and the doctor has sterilized you. You can't give birth again. Yeah? For that one, there is nothing that you can do. That there are so many methods today when a woman gives birth, they can do that. One of our sisters just gave birth two days ago and the doctors wanted to do that to her. I said, sister, if you do it, you are gone. You know the truth now. So there is no grace for you again. Don't do it. Say, but pastor, every now I give birth, they, they, I go to cesarean. And to be honest with you, the sister gave birth and that, that child is about uh, four kilos. That child is so heavy. The, the, the cheek is like the mother cheek already. And such she, the pervers will not open. So they need to cut the woman. She's giving birth to four children. And all of them she need to go to the cesarean. What can I do? It is in the hands of God. I said, sister, if through that childbirth you die, you go to heaven. I said, Pastor Gabriel, why are you saying that? I said, so you don't want to go to heaven now? <laughs> People are not saved yet. Put your trust in God. Come what's me. If you are afraid of death, you will sin. If you are afraid of death, you will sin. Fear, fear causes man to sin. Every sin is generated from fear. Understand that. Ignorance, inferiority complex, and lack of knowledge cause woman to fear. Why are you afraid of death? If you die and you go to heaven, what is the need? Pray to God to take away fear and commit your ways unto God and live a holy life, a righteous life. Hate what God hates. Love what God loves. Live righteous life. Remove every adornment out of your body. Cover yourself with a long robe and long dress. Remove everything which is not natural out of your heart, out of your mind, out of your spirit. And let God bless you for that. Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me from my unrighteousness. Save me from my demonic arts. I invite you into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. Come into my life, O God, and save my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. Please send this video to a brother. Send it to a Christian brother. I want all holiness Christians should listen to this video because there are so many things said that will help a brother. I love you. I'm going to put this on YouTube. Go and watch it. And on Facebook, go and watch it. I love you. My name is Brother Gabriel. Have a nice day. Amen.